Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Fedora Studio. I'm super happy to have Smira Goel and Fernando Mancera here with me today. And we're gonna be talking a little bit about the Fedora Mentored Projects Program. Uh, I've been working with both of them for quite some time. Uh, they've both been Fedora contributors since about 2020. Smira is uh, a former outreachy intern from 2020 and has also been a mentor for various other projects. Fernando got involved with Fedora in 2020 as a packager, uh, and both of them are today helping in the role as coordinators of the Fedora Mentored Projects Program. In addition to the coordinator title, they're also the uh, co-leads of a, a community initiative that has been running since almost the start of this year to help revamp some of the, uh, the programs that we participate in, like how we organize things, um, how we like the pro which programs we participate in and helping mentors and interns be successful in their projects. You can find more about this from the Flock session, Flock being our annual contributor conference where Fernando and Samira both presented on the on the initiative itself. So today we're going to go a little bit further along and have like an interesting kind of reflection here on what are some of the like challenges that we've seen working with mentored projects and uh, what are some of the lessons learned here? And then also a little sneak peek preview to what's coming ahead in 2025 for mentored projects, both for mentors and perhaps pers prospective uh, applicants for the next round of outreachy. So with that, I'm gonna go and hand it over to both of you. And uh, why don't we start with just a quick refresher, just, you know, quick top level thing, what's been going on in this initiative and what are, what is, what are Fedora mentored projects? Why are we doing these, these projects? Why are we doing these internships? What's the point? Either one of you want to start off? Yeah, I can start off with like a high level overview of the initiative. So uh, we started the initiative with the focus on establishing a structured and supportive environment for people in the Fedora community who participate in mentored projects, either as a mentor or as a mentee. Um, and the goal that we had with this initiative was to create a future where mentors and mentees understand their roles, their responsibilities, and there's a seamless onboarding process. Um, we also want to uh, create a culture of recognition because we understand that people who participate in these programs, especially mentors, they put in a lot of their time and resources and efforts to help bring more contributors to the Fedora community, which is really important for us to grow and have uh, and participate in the global ecosystem, the global open source, open source ecosystem. So yeah, that's where we stand with the goal of the initiative. Anything you want to add on there, Fernando? No, I think it's, it's Mira described perfectly. All right. Well, I know as part of this initiative, you know, we've been doing this since January and, uh, you know, if you've been involved, you know, a little bit of what's been going on. And I know we talked a little bit about this at Flock, but maybe you just want to give us a little bit of a preview of what are some of the things we've been doing in this mentor projects initiative this year specifically. Right. So let me take that part. So we have been working first into the role handbooks. So these role handbooks are guides for uh future mentees uh mentors and uh project uh, uh people are organizing the 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 programs uh to understand how they can participate with fedora how they can apply how they can move things forward how to communicate with the mentor or with the mentee uh some tips in general and and an idea that the idea behind this is to uh, give them a guide to well, to, to be able or, or to help them to navigate the situation easily. Uh, this can be an easy situation where things are going very well and then how they can leverage, uh, take that to the next level. Or if things are going not very well, how they can navigate through challenge and, and end up in a good situation. And also we have applied to um, Outreachy and Google Summer of Code and Google Season of Dogs. Uh, unfortunately, on Google Summer of Code and Google Season of, Dog, of Dogs, we have not been accepted as an organization. Uh, but we have been accepted at Fedora. And we have conducted uh, 
three Orichi projects. Um, and yeah, uh, two of them uh, land successfully. And I think the, the mentees had a very great, very good experience. They shared their experience on the flock. We had a um, showcase of their mentor projects and they showed uh, all of us what they did. And yeah, I think uh, this is, is basically all the idea is to revive uh, the mentoring in Fedora and take it to the next level. So we have documentation and people, it, it doesn't depend necessarily on us, but also that people can use the documentation to move it forward in the future if we are not available anymore or if someone else wants to join us uh, to move things forward. Excellent. Samira, anything you want to add on there? I think that covers most of it, but I do want to add that there has there are other things that are also brewing. Right now we're working on swag and other things for mentor projects. Uh, we also interviewed people who have participated in the program uh, previously and just gotten to know how their experience was, which has been really informative to help us do the documentation and write the role handbooks. So yeah, a lot of other stuff also that has been going on behind the scenes. Yeah, and you know, I love that about both the interviews that were done with past interns and mentors about their experience and the things that didn't go super well, as well as in the handbooks that we've been working on, I like that we talk about the challenges and the things that are difficult, right? Because it's easy, you know, like, oh, you have an amazing intern, you have an amazing project, everything is perfect, it's easy, you get to the end and it's complete. But things don't always go that way. There's always some kind of challenge or things that come up along the journey. And I figured for part of our conversation today, we could take a look at, you know, just thinking out loud about some of the things that we've seen across the years of being coordinators and mentors and interns because a lot of those things have informed why we're doing what we're doing with this initiative and the mentor projects programs that we participate in so i'd be really curious to hear from both of you because you both have different experiences as intern or mentor and of course as coordinators so like what's some of these like challenging things that you've seen come up and how have we worked through them when they happen I have a, a meta one, uh, just as co-leads of this initiative and working with Justin and Yona from the council, uh, what I've realized is working online is and collaborating online is very difficult. Uh, we were lucky enough that we had uh, some opportunities throughout the year to meet and do some IRL work which I think has, has been some of our most productive days where we got so many things done, even in just a couple of hours, just because we were sitting at the same table and just we could, we could talk to each other uh, and look at each other's screen and do the same thing together. So I think it's been challenging. Of course, we do make it work, yes. But just being able to have that opportunity to meet in real life and do some async, uh, do some synchronous work has been great yeah i think that was a nice way to overcome this and um even though we didn't specifically need for working the, for for working on this initiative but rather we took opportunities where we were already coming together like conferences we used those and set aside some time to work on this and i think that has been really helpful great answer yeah so to me, um, I think he learned uh, a lot during this uh, experience because we had an uh, unexpected situation at the beginning of the Rishi season. So usually uh, a mentor is ready to face a situation where the mentee is, is maybe not prepared enough or you have some miscommunication or misunderstanding with them or they have some difficulties. But uh, we were not ready uh, to have some issues with uh, uh, with, with selecting the mentee. Um, so, uh, so, so to provide some context uh, for some of the projects, we picked one mentee based on the uh, different uh, the, the evaluation process, 
And then we were told that that mentee were not suitable for Rishi. So we picked another one and we were told the same thing again. And then we picked another one and finally this one uh, made it. So um, we needed to adapt a lot there. And also it happened for another of our projects. Uh, in this case, we didn't pick another one, but we, uh, we picked two, men two mentees from a different project instead. And that was successful thing to do. So we, we learned a lot on, on that regard, how to react, how to be able to pick a different mentee, uh, how to be able to uh, do not, uh, be, because also you're, you're told this, uh, you're told, we, we were told this in, in a very short term, so we didn't have a lot of time to think, what are we going to do? We like, have a couple of days to adapt. So yeah, um, we learned a lot and we, we try to document all of that to, to well, if in the future we have a similar situation, at least uh, the person or the people in charge can, can learn from our experience and well have a reference of what we did and what worked for us and what didn't work. And also we learned that sometimes it's maybe better to do not pick a candidate and ask other projects if they have a capacity for another candidate that picking a candidate yes or yes uh, for the project. If you think someone is not really, yeah, and or you won't have the time to teach them, uh, it's probably to uh, provide that resources to another project instead of forcing it into that one. So yeah, uh, I, I think uh, we, we learned that. That is not an usual situation, I hope. Um, but, but at least we got the experience and for the next time we are going to be more ready if we face the same situation again, which I hope it won't ever happen. <laughs> Go for it, Samira. So I think uh, uh, this example that Fernando gave is just shows that each cohort, each program, each pro project, each year that we participate in, it's so different because up until this year, I think one of the main challenges that I had in my mind when it came to mentor projects was that we never have enough mentors or enough pro projects. And this year we had the opposite problem where we were sort of, we didn't have enough interns or applicants. So uh, I think uh, that another challenge was uh, just trying to, just trying to document, especially when we were documenting the role handbooks, was that you cannot possibly document every each and every scenario that you could possibly run into. And so that is why these role handbooks have to be sort of like a living document, which grow uh, with each, each part, like each year, each program that we participate in, because we cannot take like, some of these situations, you cannot foresee that you would, uh, the mentors or the mentee or the program would run into, and it's really hard to anticipate those. And so I think the challenge here was that we have to be flexible. Uh, and as, as uh, I think what Fernando mentioned is great, it, it, like don't just accept any intern, you know, just because you have a project does not mean that you have to accept any intern, especially because there were other projects where, where we, because we could accept two interns that turned out great rather than accepting not our first choice or even our third choice at that point. So yeah, just learning to be flexible, expecting the unexpected and treating each participation round, each project as its own unique thing, which, which may follow some things or some challenges from previous rounds, but you can never, you can never really tell what's going to happen. And uh, since you both mentioned it to be quite selfish, uh, as the person whose project benefited from having two interns, it was great for me. I had two amazing interns, Rosalind and Tosin, who were helping as community architects this, uh, this last round. So I was really happy about that. But, you know, we're getting close to the end of our slot here. So I figured, why don't we do a little bit of a spoiler? Well, sort of spoiler, but um, maybe one of you can address uh, the timeline for mentors for the next mentored projects round, important dates or months to be thoughtful of as we're going into this next round. And then the other one of you can tackle uh, important dates and timeline for prospective interns and applicants to the next mentored project round. Who wants to go first and take which one? 
I can start with the uh, pro project proposal. So obviously the exact timelines are up on uh, the RTC website. So in the next cohort, which is the summer cohort, May 2025, you'll be participating in the RTC program. The exact dates are available on the website, but as a rough timeline, uh, January is when they start a call for a call for projects uh, from different communities. So January, and I think the hard deadline is in February. Uh, so, it, but it's better to start your pro project proposals by opening a ticket on the Mentor Project Kit Lab in January so that people have time to leave feedback and we can, uh, if we have all the projects early in, then we can evaluate which projects we can fund because obviously we have a limited budget. And so January would be a good time for prospective mentors to open issues for the project proposals. And then from then onwards, uh, that we follow the same timeline which Outreachy has, where we submit the selected project proposals to the Outreachy website, and then the contribution period starts where applicants contribute to uh, uh, apply for each project. Yeah, I wanted also to mention that uh, uh, one thing that is worth to mention is that interns uh, just are looking into it uh, because around mid-January or even before the inter applications are going to start and you, you might start applying uh, sooner than later. Um, yeah, and then uh, I think around March, the project list will be fin finalized. So but by that time, you should already apply it. Even if we don't know if you are going to be, because we cannot confirm it, if we are going to be there uh, for Richie, but we suspect that we are going to be able. Um, but even if we are not, we did not yet announce it because it's not yet official. Uh, we personally recommend you to, to apply um, to or Richie anyway. And then if we are there, apply with us. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I think that takes us to the end of our slot here. So uh, we'll put some links in the description for folks to go and check out our role handbooks um, and also to learn a little bit more about what we've been doing. If you wanna keep up with updates about mentored projects, probably the best place to keep an eye on is uh, we have a GitLab issue tracker if you wanna get everything by the by the comment or you can keep out a watch out for news on the Fedora community blog where we usually announce news and details about the next upcoming round and when to propose projects. So that's a good place to keep an eye on. But thank you both for joining me today here in the Fedora studio. And I'm excited for our next round of mentor projects, which will be just around the corner. Thank you both for being here. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Jason. Thank you.